Oh, hey everyone, I'm Big John, and welcome to another episode of the Diz Ability Show. Now, before we get to it, uh, I just want to announce the winner of our March Madness Tournament. It was a very tight final round, but we do have a winner by a hair, or should I say winner by a brer rabbit. That's right, Splash Mountain is our winner. And so we'll end, so we're going to end today's, so starting with today's video, we're going to end off the show with a new ending line. But now let's get right down to business. So this week I want to talk to you guys about the, about dining. So in the past, or when there is not a global pandemic going on, Disney, you can make your dining reservations six months in advance. But right now, because of COVID and the whole park reservation thing, you can now only make dining reservations only 60 days out. So, you have to, so what you got to do is decide where you want to go before the at 60 day mark. Decide where you want, what, figure out what what parks are going to be in that day or or if you're going to go to Disney Springs one day it you really got to find, you really got to get them get the re those reservations in the because especially if you want a a huge place like especially if you want if you want a reservation for like Beast Castle or or Chef Mickey's, you, or Hollywood and Vine, you gotta get those in, get those big places in fast, because once those reservations are gone, they're gone. So it helps to pre-plan your dining reservations, and make sure you, or it's what everyone wants to do. So, that's my tip, let me know in the comments if as always, if you have any questions on how to do Disney for people with disabilities, and I'll make sure it gets into a future episode. And now it's time for this week's Top 5. So, as we all know, Disney's attractions are, are, the, are some of the greatest of all time. Attractions that have had great reviews by many people. But there are some... That have that did not that there are some attractions that that were planned out to be great ideas, but fell short or when they were out in the public. So this week are my top five whoopsie moments. My top five top five whoopsies things that did things Disney tried doing that did not turn out well. Number five, the t Enchanted Tiki Room under new management. Back in the 2000s, Disney had this crazy idea to turn Walt's very first audio animatronic attraction into a horrendous eyesore with Iago and Zazu. And it had it did not have good reviews for the six or five years it was around, but luckily, something was done about it. I don't know if it was a spiritual thing or or not, but the Iago animatronic caught on fire, and the Imagineers were like, "What have we done?" So they turned it back into the original Enchanted Tiki Room. But, of course, before the under-new management thing, the Enchanted Tiki Room in Florida was called Tropical Serenade. So, anyway, that's number five. Number four, perhaps the scariest attraction Disney ever created, Alien Encounter. So, before Stitch, we had... Tomorrowland had this thing, you know, see, back in the 90s, Tomorrowland got a major revamp uh, of some, 
of a retro future like reminiscent Jules Verne illustrations and they they wanted to create an, a a very scary attraction where you are trapped in a room with an alien people did not like it you do not kids don't want to go to Disney and 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 have and have the and have the pee scared out of them you you don't want that so they got rid of that and got stitch and that didn't work out well either <laughs> anyway all right number three pleasure island now i know what you're all gonna say but pleasure island was awesome pleasure island was a great place for adults to get away that's the that's that's the problem it was an adult place now of course, I was never. Of course, I never got my chance to go to Pleasure Island. I would have loved the Adventurers Club and the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, but like I said, it's an. It was only made for adults. If you want to go to an adult-only playground, get on a plane to Vegas. All right, number two. The Disney Institute. Not the Disney Institute that you guys are thinking of, but before Saratoga Springs, there was a Disney hotel on property where you could, that had like community college sort of like classes, like cooking and visual makeup art class or special effects makeup or canoeing or rock climbing, that sort of stuff. You, you you don't want to go on a Disney vacation and take classes. That, that that's probably where they went wrong with the whole idea. And my number one Disney whoopsie, the minivans. All right, now the minivans, of course, like everything else I've said so far at the time, was a good idea, but. You, there are, it was it was way cheaper it's way cheaper than the lift the lift services that are right n near on property you you don't want to have your own disney car service and not have it cheaper than er, than the lifts and the ubers that are very that are very close So anyway, that's this week's top five. Let me know in the comments if you have anything to say about our Disney attractions that did not last long. And now, I want to get personal. As you know, it is World Autism Month. And for those of you who have been with me for about a year now, from when I did my special uh, Autism Awareness Day video, I want to do something like that right now. So... Over the past, during this past year, I have, over the past few years, I have met and worked with tons of special people on the spectrum like myself. There are very special people with their own special talents. Like last summer, we went to Pennsylvania and, uh, and we stopped at a Harvest Hosts thing where a little, uh, or a 15 year old girl on the spectrum that I met and and their parents are one of my subscribers. They, I per, we purchased some of their air clay pots, and and I, I and I got to know them, and it it gives me it gives me great pride to see my fellow people on the autism spectrum show off their talents and do what they want to do. That is. Because some people try to put barriers in front of us. But we like to jump those barriers. Because I want to quote Christopher Robin from Pooh's Grand Adventure. You are, brave, you are braver than you seem, smarter than you think, and stronger than you, walk, than you feel or something like that. But every single person I know with autism like me they have a special talent and there is nothing to stand in that should stand in their way to stop them from achieving it 
to all of my fellow people with autism, I support each and every one of you. Don't let anyone say that you're not capable of stuff, ever. So, <laughs> that's this week's show. Let me know in the comments, as always, if you have any questions on how to do Disney for people with disabilities, and I'll make sure it gets in a future episode. And now for this week's shout-outs. If, if you want to add a little magic to your next Zoom thing, or if you want to send... Or if you want to the see magic, but can't, make sure you check out out Terry Ward Performer or TerryWardMagic.com. Terry Ward, or as my fellow Citizens fans w would know him as Talent Agent Jack Diamond. Right now with the layoffs, he is doing some Zoom magic stuff. So make sure you check him out and try to book him for your for your next party or something like that. Also, check out my good friend Beth over at Beth's Disney Adventures on YouTube. She has... A whole bunch of streams coming up this month with a whole lot of her friends. And you never know who she's going to do some of those videos with. Also, make sure you check out my good friend CJ over at Disney Planning Guide. She does Diz Week's news every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. Check her out. Also, my good friends, the Sabal Family, Sabal Family Vlogs. They do videos and live streams on youtube and facebook all the time make sure you check them out as well and as always for the latest attraction news make sure you check out my good friends over at attractions magazine and until next time have a zippity doo da day